<laughs> All right. Uh, let me do him first. Randy, I appreciate your uh, charity efforts. Thank you. I'm uh, Rick Dunlap, Pell City, Alabama, not far from where you're from. Yeah, that's true. I used to play you guys in Gaston in football. But, uh, and I'm an Alabama fan, I'm sorry. But <laughs> my uncle went, yeah, I'm glad to see you're a Gamecock. I don't get, invo I don't get involved in that. I... <laughs> well, you got a good school there, being a Gamecock. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite song on your new album? Do you have any favorite? Probably one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, because it's it's kind of like uh, the the album or the CD is the thought behind the title is really not the thought behind the song one on one which is on the CD. To me, one on one with the CD is about uh, hopefully like it's like me picking up that guitar and singing you these songs where it just it's just where you feel like it's a personal thing from me singing to whoever's listening to, you know to the music. But the song one on one is a real mushy sexy love song and uh and it but and that's that's my kind of song that's the songs i like to write and it's they're very hard to write uh and i should say, they're not hard to write it's hard to find the emotion and the way to put something that they that's not uh x-rated i guess that that they'll play on a radio station or whatever and uh but so you do have to alter sometimes the creative side of yourself in order to get the point across. And one of the great advices, uh, uh, bits of advice that I had was from Conway Twitty, and he told me that in songs that you're writing was that if you could substitute a couple of words for each one of your words that you can't actually say on TV or whatever, then most of the time you were on your way to writing a hit song. So that that's obviously all these uh, the songs that I wrote out you know they're part of my life and there's a story behind all of them you know so it's uh you know pray me back home again was a song that uh I'd had ever since the day of 911 I wrote that song that day and it was it was one of the most as you know when, when I sang that song it takes me back just right to that day how I felt and maybe y'all can't remember that, but I can remember thinking about the helplessness and hopelessness that I had being in Las Vegas, Nevada, and not really knowing if I would ever get back home again. I mean, they were talking about there in Las Vegas that the terrorists were going to blow up all the motels and the casinos, and on top of all the casinos, there were guards and helicopters flying by with gunships. And I mean, it was a time unlike anything that I'd ever been part of, and I got to make one phone call to Kelly before my phone service went out uh, there, and I, that was uh, really the way it was. It was just, you know, helpless. And so I sat down and wrote this song, and I didn't really want to, like, sing it or try to get anybody else to sing it or anything like that. I had to write the song. And I remember so well I looked and looked and looked outside the window trying to find an American flag. Because I just wanted to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I just wanted to say, I mean, just me, myself, and I looking out the window and just do the Pledge of Allegiance. And I finally found a flag, and so I did that. And for somehow it made me feel uh, better. And, and I remember what my mother does in our family is when we have family crisis or whatever, she wants us all together around the circle, and we all recite the Lord's Prayer. And so that, that came about in this song. And, of course, you have to hear the song. But uh, I just thought it was important to include that song in this, this project. And, and, and in a way, uh, like my brother-in-law just got back from Iraq, and a way of saying to those men and women, you know, thank you for, you know, hopefully we don't have another day like that. And so far we have it. And... It really bothers me in this country that we just kind of take it for granted that there won't be another day like that when we know that there are people plotting as we speak to try to make things even worse than that today. And we don't seem to give any credit to the people that are standing guard for us. Right. And I just guess it really bothers me. You're, I can you're go in the on reserve. And on about or... it. <laughs> oh, really? Well, my, my father-in-law was... He was with the 82nd Airborne. And, uh, <laughs> and he, 
I, and see, it's the I, first time I've seen him in civilian clothes. When, when I went, uh, I remember the Vietnam thing and being, you know, I knew that I was going to have to go. And so I got, uh, I was, I had, we have this loop there that we run, and I was running and doing all the exercise and everything, and then they stopped the the war. And uh, But that was, I've told a lot of people about that decision. That was a decision you had to make back in those days because, you know, it, the, everybody was, and I got to, I saw something uh, when I was in high school during that time that always stuck a really tough place in my heart. There was a Marine that came there to our high school with his uniform on, and I heard one person boo. Now, this is in Fort Payne, wow. Alabama. And I heard one, one guy, I'm sure it was some kid, but that stuck me so hard in my heart that that could happen in our little hometown. Because I knew when they were landing in San Francisco, you know, people were throwing stuff at them and, and stuff like that. And, uh, of course, you know, personally, I like to see somebody go back and get some of that footage and find those people. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what are you doing nowadays, buddy? <laughs> All right, so what's your question? What's your name first? Whoops. I'm Yolanda. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, first of all, I'd like to have a lock of your hair. <laughs> I've been we sell those, ma'am, hair. for St. Jude. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> Um, my question is, is, you know, congratulations, first of all, on your long career. I mean, that's just fabulous. Decades of songs. I would like to know, what is your favorite song of all time that you've recorded and the best memory that you had? The favorite song? <laughs> that that would probably... That's like calling one of your babies ugly. Yeah. I mean, if I got a... If I got to pick one, probably it's either Mountain Music or My Homes in Alabama. Probably just as one is, that you're familiar with and... Uh, and what was the other question? Favorite. No. No. <laughs> Favorite memory. <laughs> Being in the band. Uh, the best memory, probably, well, one of my f- favorite memories was uh, we played at the Constitution Hall, and uh, it snowed. And Bob Hope was there, and it was a it's a patriotic thing that we did. And Bob Hope, we were concerned. Bob was in his limo, and and we were in our limo, and we were going to the wall to make some pictures. And the snow was about six or eight inches deep. And I will never forget that I didn't want to be disrespectful of Bob Hope because I, he was pretty old at that time. And, of course, he lived much longer after that. But he got out of his limo and just took off walking toward the wall. <laughs> and so then we took off walking toward the wall because we wanted, we didn't want to be younger and go out there and walk up the wall and him not be able to walk to the wall because he had certainly entertained the troops and, uh, you know, and basically risked his life. You know that the Viet Cong or whatever would have loved to have done away with Bob Hope while he was entertaining the troops in Vietnam. And, uh, all the other places that he had been. But that was one of the really, and, and I got a piece of advice from him there that day that uh, I just told him I was just so impressed. I said, you know, Mr. Hope, I'm just so impressed that you, you know, the kind of weather that we're having and, and that you're out here at the wall so we could, uh, took some pictures or whatever. And he said, I just want to tell you something. If you're going to make an error in your career, Always err on the side of your country, wow. and which is basically patriotism. You know, if you're going to be over patriotic instead of the other way, and I always that's I really took that to heart. 